Welcome everyone to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today, Tony Khan steps in it. He made a comment about WCW, so Eric Bischoff bit his head off. We're going to play Tony Khan's comment, then we're going to play Eric Bischoff's response, and we're going to have some fun with it. Okay? All right, let's go. Uh, you know, Danny and uh, everybody done a great job, along with John and, and Adam, and I think them working with the live events team, they've stepped up. So we've seen a good boost. So year over year, Q4, we're up, which is great. And so I want to keep growing. I think, I don't know if you saw the study I is from questions I had asked Here we and go. it came out favorably. And there's a reason I asked because my gut said it was true. And it was, you know, the numbers we're doing for our tickets are not only comparable to what WCW was doing in the mid nineties, but in many cases better. Like our numbers are better per show uh, than WCW in '94, and and I think right on '96 and '95, like right there. And I think well, I think we're ahead of one year and right behind the other, like right kind of there. Wrestle takes estimates, and I'm not sure. You know, the Wrestle takes. Wait a minute. Okay, '94, '95. I can see that being the case. Um, Nitro started. Nitro went live in '95. All right. So, and notoriously, WCW couldn't really sell that many tickets in the early '90s before they really hit with Nitro. So, I can see you saying that, but certainly you don't mean now because this is one of the worst times for AEW in terms of ticket sales in a long time. Like they sold they they sold tickets more often their first year than they sold them now. So, and what study is he talking about? Who commissioned this study? Unless the study is just WrestleTix, which I hope it's not because it's just an estimate. And why do you need WrestleTix estimates? Don't you know what tickets you sold? You sold the tickets. So how do you... Come on, man. Come on, Tony. Why are, we li why are, you, why are you listing WrestleTix? You should know how many tickets you sold to each individual Dynamite and Rampage and Collision show. You should know what you're doing. That's that sleazy stuff I'm talking about right there. Talking about Russell Ticks. Get out of here with that Russell Ticks. You know the tickets you sold to a collision show. You know how many it was. What you listening to the Thurston for? Kind of there. Russell Ticks estimates. And I'm not sure, you know, the Russell Ticks, that's their estimate. Usually it looks like it's pretty close. There's times where I think he's like a couple, you know, if it's several thousand tickets, they might be off by a couple hundred, which is a lot on one hand. But on the other hand, it's like, you know, sometimes it's five to 10% of the whole thing. So are they what? are usually within a pretty good margin of error by the way he counts them. And uh, when they did that study with WCW, I think that's a good comparison. What? If you off by 10%, that's a lot. 10% is a lot. All right. If you off by 10%, that is a lot. All right. That's missing 50 out of 500. That's a lot. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of empty seats right there, brother. Uh, that's missing 100 out of 1,000 right there. That's a lot. Uh, oh, oh, God. And uh, to be a challenger brand, there hasn't been a company like AEW that had this big of a market share since the 90s. It's really cool. And like I said, I think the juggernaut is, in many ways, that we're up against is bigger than ever and more imposing than ever. And in a digital era, when you're facing that kind of juggernaut, it's constant pressure. And I think this year we've delivered with more great shows than ever before. And it's a great time to be AEW. And so I'm really excited about what we're doing. I, I think certainly when you talk about tickets, some of our most exciting momentum we've ever had, you know, the, the Greensboro, we talked about it on the show tonight, but today was the first day of tickets for a revolution and we're well over now over 11,000 tickets sold uh, for a show on the first day. So that's our biggest uh, for, for any non first time event. I think that's going to be up there with like the first double or nothing, the first grand slam. That's I one of our biggest first days we've ever done. Conrad, my fucking head's going to explode. <laughs> Wait a minute before, before Bischoff jumps in. He said 11,000 tickets, and that's going to be the most for a non-first-time event. Unless he meant the most first day. Which would make sense, considering Sting put his career up and said that this is going to be it for him. Then I would imagine 
it's not like you drew from great storylines. You basically told everybody almost two months ago that Sting's last show was Revolution. So people are buying tickets because it's going to be their last chance to see Sting in, pus- in person. So, okay. It works out for you. It's your tickets. Load. I've never heard so much meaningless bullshit in, in a press conference in my entire life. This is not a press conference. This is let me get up and talk about how great I am and how great this company is and try to blow smoke up everybody's ass. And, hey, the, the hardcore AEW Twitter X fan base is going to suck it up, and they're going to be repeating it word for word. And the problem is there's nothing but air in all of those comments. It's Now that I think about it, WCW in 94, 95, they didn't have a lot of TV shows either. Uh, I think they only had two, and uh, neither one of them were live. Nitro was their first live show, and then of course they had they had pay per views, but their pay per views were kind of dog shit until Hogan came in, and then Hogan really helped them sell pay per views. But they they notoriously couldn't sell any tickets, like that was a, a pretty notorious thing there. But um, I'm pretty sure Bischoff is about to go nuts off of a. Uh, Something small that Bischoff said. I mean that uh Khan said, but I just I just really thought about that. Like uh WCW Saturday night, those were very, very small venues. Very small venues. WCW Pro, uh again, not very big venues. Uh they didn't start running big venues until Nitro. And then the occasional pay per view they would do a venue. Huh. It's nonsense. Trying to compare Dynamite or, or AEW ticket sales to WCW in 96, are you freaking high? Every week we do this show, we're covering 96, 97, 98. We're putting 18,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people for a TV show. Dynamite is lucky to do, they're putting, they're scaling 10,000 seat arenas for 5,000 people and praying to God there's a walk up. Otherwise, they're not going to sell out. How can you make those statements and expect anybody to think you have any credibility whatsoever? Are you looking at one or two isolated situations and extrapolating a scenario or a picture or projection based on that? It's misleading as hell. It's untrue. It's dishonest. It's it, and you know what? It's delusional, and I think Tony's deluding himself, and hopefully, and hoping I should say that he's able to delude other people along with him into believing in this thing. That's nothing more than a very, very, very expensive vanity project. Okay, now. Well, I need to get it hot. But, well, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, AEW with all in. Let's say that they did so. 80 some thousand tickets. That's more than WCW ever sold for one of it. Because I think AEW, I mean, uh, WCW's, their top venue was the Georgia Dome. And I think they did almost 40,000 people in that venue. But they didn't regularly run venues that large. All right. So it was just like. All In was kind of a one-off, even though they're going to be making it a yearly thing. Where, yeah, you sold 80,000, 70-some-odd thousand tickets, whatever it was. But it's not a regular show. When they did ran the Georgia Dome, that was for a regular Nitro. And they put almost 40,000 people in the building. That's a lot for a regular television show. Right? Not for, you know, your, your big... That was Bischoff's fault that it wasn't a really a big pay per view, it wasn't Starcade or anything like that. So if you if you count all in, then I can see how the average might be pretty high, because they're going to count the pay per view who which they sold the most tickets at, which is going to be all in, and that's going to lift the average up quite a bit. So I can see why if you were just doing a straight average of this is the average ticket sold for WCW in 1996 or whatever, here's the average for AEW, and then you take into account all in, 
which sold probably two to three times whatever the highest was of WCW show in 1996, which I don't know what it is. I'm not going to do that math. I'm not looking it up. All right. I'm just saying to myself, it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30,000 tickets. The highest that they've done in their best year, which was 96 through 98. All right. They probably did 30,000, 40,000 max. Well, all in is twice that. So if you consider all in and then you average, you take all in as part of the average, it's going to uptick the ticket sales for AEW in that regard. So if you're looking at straight, what's WCW average ticket sales in 1996? And they didn't have a 40,000 seat arena in that show or in that, in that year. Then maybe AEW got them beat right now. Same thing for 97, same thing for 98. But in 98, you did have the Georgia Dome show. That's what Hogan and uh, Goldberg, right? Now, uh, I believe you had Hogan and Sting in 97, Starcade, but I don't know what the what the uh, attendance was for that. I uh, about the comparison. Um, so, matter of fact, let's take a look. I'm going to look at just on that one because I'm pretty sure that one was the highest ticket sold in that era before uh, Goldberg came in. So, 97 Starcade, what was the this was December 28th, 1997. Attendance was 17,500. Huh. That actually don't sound like a lot. 17,500? That don't sound like a lot. Uh, but Star K98 was 16,000. Star K99, ooh boy, it was half that. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I was about right. So, um, let's see, uh, 1996, well, what was the first event after the, after the NWO was formed? Was it the Hog Wild? Hog Wild 96? This was after Hogan turned heel? Yeah, August of 96? Uh... Yeah, it only did 5,000... Uh, attendance. Yikes. Fall Brawl. 11,000. Doubled in in a month. Uh, Halloween Havoc. 10,000. World War 3. 10,000. Uh, World War... Oh, shit. I went to... <laughs> I went to World War 3 the next year, which was 17,000. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it, it picked up in about September. Of 96. That's when things picked up in terms of attendance and everything. So that's just me doing a cursory glance. And I can tell you that sounds about right to me. Uh, about the comparison to WWE. Oh God, it's just frustrating. It's so. What a great opportunity Tony has. Notice I didn't say had. Has. What a great opportunity he has. But if you can't be real, if you can't be honest with yourself, and look at the things that are not working and address them, then you're just, you're deluding yourself. And he'll, he'll be able to keep on doing it because, well, he's got his dad's money and he's not accountable and he can keep doing it as long as he wants to do it. Good for Tony Khan, but not so good for the business. If this doesn't work, if, if WD, WBD makes that move to WWE, which could happen, we don't know if it will, maybe, maybe not. If it doesn't happen and AEW stays on WBD, then forget all this hyperbole, Tony. Look at reality and fix the shit that needs to be fixed. And I uh, whether it's right or wrong, he needs to fix the problem that he needs to be fixed. <laughs> um, because the problem remains. Even if, even if it was true, the buildings are still mostly empty now. I mean, for Christ's sake. Even if it was true, um, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense, you know. Um, yeah, the highest attendance record for WCW. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's got no. It's forty one thousand four hundred and twelve. 
That's where it ends on a Sportster. And that was... Uh, what what show was this? Was this a was this a yeah Goldberg Hogan, Georgia Dome? Okay, uh, that's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty six, thirty seven thousand, probably with some comps. Let's let's take a look at how much, uh, what it was exactly. Okay, yes, yeah, forty one thousand four hundred and twelve, and they're saying that. All in did twice that, and this was the highest WCW's attendance. And they never ran a they never ran a venue this large in their prime. You know, when they were at the top of the business, they never ran a seventy or thousand seat arena. You know, that was a good gamble that Tony Khan took. Um, so if you want to take that into account, yeah, but you got an outlier there called All In. It's not a regular show. It's a super show. It's like, you know, WWE counted WrestleMania towards um, some of their other events, you know. Um, it counts, but everybody knows you're probably going to sell more tickets at WrestleMania than you are at any other time in the year. And now SummerSlam is starting to catch up, but for a long time, WrestleMania was the one event that you could guarantee to sell 30,000 tickets at. So, Tony Khan gets reamed by Eric Bischoff. Uh, it was humorous. <laughs> I think Tony Khan should just stop comparing himself to Ted Turner and Eric Bischoff. Look, I get why he's doing it. He's doing it for the pop. He's doing it because he's trying to put things into perspective for people. He's trying to say, hey, other guys that you might respect more than me, I'm selling as much or more than they did. And that's meant to give him some stripes, get him some respect from these people who keep calling him the snowman. At the same time, it's a bunch of notice me senpai stuff, you know? That's exactly what's going on here. Notice me senpai, pay attention to me, and trying to distract from, you know, the half-empty buildings that we're looking at. It's not going to work. Even if this was true, it still doesn't work. Please, Tony, stop it. But I, I continue to find it humorous. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if Eric Bischoff has anything more to say. Look at reality and fix the shit that needs to be fixed. And until you do that, you're just going to be the brunt of a joke. Your punchline. All right. Uh, thank you guys for your time. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Best house ever, you daddy. <laughs>